There you go. <laughs> so good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Village of Cary and the Board of Zoning, Planning, and Appeals, I'd like to hereby call this meeting to order on this Thursday, April the 14th, 2022. Time is 7 p.m. We have a quorum of members, and at this time, I'd like to ask our Director of Community Development, Mr. Brian Simmons, to please call the roll. Williams? Present. Richmond? Here. Graziano? I'm here. Jasper? Nance? Here. Laughlin? Here. Fine? Here. Corey? Here. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to rise with us for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks very much, everyone. So I was mentioning to the gentleman, the, the petitioners today, um, I know you may not be familiar with the process, so I'll just try to step you through the way this works. Um, the last little while here, what we've been doing, we've been asking Mr. Simmons to give us an overview of the application, and then upon conclusion, members of the ZPA may have questions for Mr. Simmons. Uh, once we finish that part of our meeting, uh, then we ask the petitioner to present uh, any additional information, color, comment to their petition that they think is appropriate. Uh, we'd ask you to approach the podium and state your name and address for the record. Uh, if you're not aware, these proceedings do get recorded, and so people that are not able to attend the meeting tonight, they can go back and watch them on the Village website. Once we close that portion of the meeting, uh, we open it up to the public for any comments they may have. Uh, if anyone does have any comments, again, we ask you to approach the podium and state your name and address uh, for the record. Once we close the public portion of the meeting, we then may have a discussion amongst ourselves as ZPA members. Uh, we take a vote on the request, and then upon conclusion, we deliver that result back to the ele elected officials who become the final arbiter of the discussion this evening. So that's our process. So before we begin, I just want to ask the petitioner if there's any questions about the process that uh, you may have. No? Clear. It is very clear. Okay, um, and it's very straightforward. So before we begin, we just have an administrative matter. So for the gentleman, I think I see you all with your packages in front of you tonight. Uh, we have two meeting minutes. Uh, they include the 308 Clear Lane uh, from December 9th, 2021, and the 15th uh, Second Street application from March 10th, 2022. So before I ask for general consent and approval of those meeting minutes, did anybody have any questions about those meeting minutes? Okay, by a general consent and voice vote, uh, those that are uh, in favor of approving both of those meeting minutes for December 9th, 2021 and March the 10th, 2022, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much, gentlemen. At this time, I'll now call Village Case 22, ZPA 003001. Uh, this is for 640 Industrial Drive, also commonly known as 645 Industrial Drive. And the petitioner is seeking approval for variances to decrease the required front yard setback from 30 feet to 25 feet, the required interior side setback from 15 feet to 2 feet, and the requested rear yard setback from 40 feet to 20 feet with a type C landscape transition area for an outdoor storage yard and any other relief from the unified development ordinance as may be required by this project. And at this time, we'll turn it over to Mr. Summons for an overview. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as mentioned, the request this evening is for a few variances related to uh, a new use of the subject property at 645 Industrial Drive. Uh, the subject property uh, is zoned uh, M Limited Manufacturing District. Uh, the approvals this evening, uh, the petitioner is seeking approval of three variations uh, related to the development uh, the use of this property. Uh, brief history in the, the site, uh, the property was annexed into the village of Cary back in 1978 as part of the Cary Industrial Center. Uh, in 1986, uh, the Coleman's Restaurant, uh, which was the primary use of the property, uh, was constructed. And then recently, last year, the, the restaurant was closed uh, and the property was sold to uh, Illinois Lift. Uh, they're seeking approval uh, for the reuse of the property. They intend to use it for an outdoor storage yard. Uh, for uh, equipment and vehicles uh, as part of their operations uh, and the variations are related to the change in the use. 
Uh, so briefly, the uh, outdoor storage yard <coughs> excuse me, uh, is a permitted use within the M district. Uh, so the use uh, by, is permitted by right. Um, it does not require any zoning relief or approvals from the village uh, or operating the area, but uh, the change in use from the restaurant uh, and parking lot operation uh, to a storage yard uh, triggers some uh, code requirements for the new uh, use of the property. Uh, essentially, the storage yard would be required to comply with the bulk standards, uh, bulk requirements for the district, the M district, uh, for a building or a structure, uh, which establishes um, restrictive uh, setbacks than what was existing when the restaurant was on the property and uh, the site was utilized as a, a parking lot. Uh, so with those changes, uh, what the sister is seeking approval for is variations to uh, the front yard setback, uh, which currently uh, the parking lot is built to a 25 foot setback line uh, under the code requirements for the M district. <coughs> there is uh, that would be required to have a 30 foot setback. Uh, as you can see, in this area of the site plan. Uh, so they're requesting a variance to maintain that existing 25 foot setback uh, for their storage yard. Uh, there will be a fence that will be installed along that frontage uh, to provide screening for any items that are stored uh, on the property. Uh, but the um, proposed condition would not be changing from what the existing condition is as, as of today for. Uh, the lighter gray area is the area that is paved um, currently today. Uh, the darker gray area, which is on the western side of the property, that's additional paving that they're proposing to install on the property to increase the amount of area that can be uh, used for storage. Uh, likewise, uh, the eastern property line, uh, the existing condition is uh, existing the, the two foot setback to the existing parking area. Uh, just are seeking a variance uh, to reduce that required setback from 15 feet down to that existing two feet uh, to maintain the existing condition on the eastern property. Uh, in the rear yard, uh, the, uh, this location here, which is next to the adjacent residential areas to the uh, north of the property, uh, they are proposing to increase the buffer yard area uh, that exists in that area now. Uh, the existing setback, uh, staff report. Um, western side of the property is roughly 15 feet uh, in width, or it was 12 feet uh, in this area, um, and about three to five feet on the eastern edge of the property uh, to increase the transition area between the, the, the residential area and the proposed use. Uh, staff requested that they uh, provide a Type C buffer yard, which uh, requires a specific landscape to be installed, um, but also to increase that buffer yard. That, uh, setback area to provide additional separation from the property line uh, to the proposed storage area. Uh, I apologize, the slide has the uh, tables over the text on this image here, but uh, the reduction would be essentially to reduce the required setback from 40 feet as it would be required for the uh, M zoning district uh, down to 20 feet. Uh, all the property complies with other uh, bulk requirements for lot coverage uh, as the maximum coverage was 85%, it would be at 76.3% of those improvements. Um, as there's no structure for most of the property, there's no uh, height limitation exactly for this project. Uh, as indicated in the, the staff report, the petition, <coughs> the petitioner is proposing to pave the storage lot uh, for the uh, storage of vehicle equipment on the property, similar to other properties that they own uh, currently along Industrial Drive. Uh, there would be a six foot tall fence that would be installed along the front of the industrial drive to provide screening. Um, an additional landscaping would be required along that fence uh, to screen the outdoor storage yard, yard area uh, as required by code. Uh, again, the rear yard area, uh, which is adjacent to the residential uh, in the Cimarron subdivision, uh, staff is requiring uh, or recommending that a Type C transition area be installed, uh, which does. Um, Image, uh, the image on the right is from our unified development orders of what uh, that transition area may look like as far as the type of plant materials that would be installed. Uh, but that would, uh, staff would recommend that a plan be submitted as part of the building permit for the site. Uh, that would include the landscape plan and may incorporate some of the existing landscaping, uh, which is already established in that area, so that uh, that can be utilized.
rise to provide a more substantial screen for the property from the adjacent residential areas. Uh, it should be noted uh, currently that there is, again, landscaping in that area. Uh, some of the homes have also installed some of their own landscaping on their property that provide additional off guards for people to use. So this would uh, provide additional screening for the storage yard from those properties. Uh, and also, um, uh, should the, uh, the variations be supported uh, this evening, uh, staff would recommend that the variations would only apply, or the addition would be added that the condition, the variations would apply to the application of the storage area itself, um, but that if any future building is constructed on the property, that they would be required to comply with the setback requirements of the structure uh, within the district, so that if a uh, building is constructed further back in the property, Uh, as with any variations, there are the various standards that need to be met uh, within uh, the Unified Development Ordinance, which are summarized in the slide. Uh, the district did provide some information there, uh, in addition as far as the, you know, how it meets the, the standards. Uh, but essentially, the property uh, or the hardship was caused by any circumstances related to the land, not the general conditions in the district. Uh, the applicant has not taken any action that has caused the extraordinary condition. It is substantially worse. Uh, the relief proposed will not alter the character of the locality of uh, our standards. Uh, as should the uh, ZPA determine that the various standards had been met, uh, it is recommended that the ZPA uh, recommend approval of the motion uh, to grant a front yard setback variance uh, from 30 feet to 25 feet, uh, an interior side yard setback variance from 15 feet to 2 feet for the eastern property uh, line. Uh, and a rear yard setback variance from 40 feet to 20 feet uh, for the subject property located at 645 Industrial Drive, uh, subject to the conditions that are still staff. I'll be happy to answer your questions the more we have in the district and provide additional information. Thanks very much, Mr. Simmons. So, gentlemen, questions for Mr. Simmons? Mr. Lockwood. I have uh, just two for you, <coughs> Mr. Simmons. Um, in between the residential property and the subject property. Uh, is there currently, you're sure you were showing on the next slide, uh, you know, the buffer zone with all the trees and all that. Is there currently a fence? There is a fence that runs along the property. There is a fence that runs along the property. Okay. And then um, when you do go back, go back one slide, um, when we look at ingress and egress to this facility, we would only have one because it's if we if we're looking at 15 feet, doesn't that second ingress or egress actually isn't that actually within the 15 feet? It would have to be closed off, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. So from a, a driveway standpoint, a driveway could be within uh, right of the the property line. It could. Be. It could be within our code. Um, so if there's a parking lot or a structure that uh, is along the property line edge, that could be uh, it's in the right of way, but it could be could be within mm -hmm. the here. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, gentlemen? We have maintained two driveways into this property. That's what that's what I'm saying. I was just wondering about the second one being within that 15 foot buffer. But there would be maybe no. two driveways. 15 feet is on that side, the driveway is on that side. Yeah, within the two feet. Our, our code would allow a driveway to be located up within one foot of the property line. But the second driveway this way, Jim, is within the two feet that would be that's being proposed. Is my question. I don't. Know, it looks to me like there is a small offset in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. there is. Yeah, just looking at the dimensions, uh, this driveway. Proposal at this point is to maintain both records for the district and provide more information to have as well. So, gentlemen, other questions for Mr. Simmons? So it is a 
What type of privacy fence is going to be installed? Uh, the proposed fence will be similar to uh, what was installed across uh, industrial drive. It's a chain link fence that has uh, slats for uh, information. Uh, basically, slats in it to restrict the visibility of this space. It will be a solid fence, but you'll be able to see it in the local and restrict the visibility of this And to see the types of landscape transition in the area, Green trees and shade trees, so that's the screen that we have Correct. Mm -hmm. Currently, across the street, they have the screen fence pushed back because they have a parking lot in front. But they're proposing here to have the fence, is that 25 feet? Is that right at the tip or is that? Yeah, so from a setback standpoint, compared to the property across the way, you can see you know, this um, plan is the buildings are side of the property here. Yep. Uh, those are at the 30 foot setback. Uh, without knowing the plans across the road, <coughs> that building is also a 30 foot setback. Uh, so our code allows uh, improvements to be performed within a required front yard, uh, which would include a parking lot and uh, those types of improvements. Uh, so across the way, uh, the parking lot is closer to industrial drive, is about to be closer to industrial drive. Um, in this case, because it's storage yard we treat that are similar to structure. Okay. Uh, so that's where the setback comes in that forces them to be some further set further back. But uh compared to the property across the way I there that has a setback even further than any other questions is this already being utilized as a storage? Uh, the, the, I came by there and uh, wasn't sure that was the same lot. Correct. We have we allowed the uh, business Storage, so this is the following. So I, I was looking at the right one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they, they, cold, they demolished the, the restaurant building from last week, uh, so they're improving it. Uh, sorry to work on the site, but in order to uh, improve in the fashion that they want to, uh, have a detailed process to proceed with their answers. Any other questions, General? So, Mr. Uh, Simmons, I just have one for you that um, in Exhibit A, there's a number of um, individuals that were contacted. And I'm wondering if the village received any feedback from any of those that were contacted. I received one inquiry today in regard to request that was going to the board hearing this afternoon. Uh, otherwise, I've not received any feedback. There are no members of the public responsible. Very good. We'll wait to hear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at this time, we'll ask the petitioner if they'd like to come forward and uh, offer any additional comments or color to the application. And again, uh, if you'd be kind enough just to state your name and address for the record. Uh, Larry Floria, 1883 Tory Parkway in Louisville, Illinois. Thank you very much, Mr. Floria. Mm -hmm. I, I think the presentation was pretty thorough, so I really don't have too much more to add to it. I did take a few notes, so I have some information I can pass along to the owners, but uh, I think uh, Brian did a pretty good job. He usually does. Yeah. Uh, but any questions you have? So let me ask the gentleman, uh, gentlemen, questions for the petitioner? Uh, just. Uh, Mr. Floria, did you have you received any uh, negative or positive feedback from the neighbors that you met with? No, um, I had not talked to anyone. Uh, I didn't call Brian today to find out if he heard heard from anyone uh, yet. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that uh, we continue to be a good neighbor. Um, and I noticed the homeowners behind there in the past have added additional screening from from the restaurant. So. That will, I'm sure, will be maintained, and, and we're going to add to that screen. That obviously is the biggest concern to make sure the homeowner area is uh, uh, screened. Uh, this use will not cause any noise, certainly, but uh, there will be the vehicles parked there. So uh, the house is a little higher, but uh, the landscaping that's already been growing there is, is quite tall, so it's pretty well screened already. But, but that's Other questions, gentlemen? So are you going to be storing the list like across the street, the same stuff? It's probably going to be mainly the trucks and some of the lower equipment he has. Uh, I think staff may have asked him not to store the real tall equipment, which, which I think that's what their intention is to keep everything uh, more taller than what the semi-truck might be. Now, for the, the rear setback, um, and also the, the existing one is much closer to the, uh, to the uh, property line. 
So you're fixing that, you'll go to 20 feet. Why did you stop at 29 feet instead of 44? Well, <clears throat> you can see from his business that he's, he's doing very well and, and he has a lot of equipment, a lot of things uh, that they're uh, repairing and, and moving through the business. So they just need as much room as they can. So that's the reason we're looking to get as much uh, space as what's reasonable to, to try to plan for. Other questions, gentlemen? So Mr. Flory, maybe you can help all of us understand with regard to the fence. Mm -hmm. Is it just going to move roughly from east to west, west to east, or is it two openings in the fence, or how is it going to work as a gate? There'll be two gates, uh, manual gates, that will be closed most of the time, but they'll open them when they're uh, you know, bringing vehicles in and out, but they'll be, be closed and locked uh, uh, for security purposes. And staff also asked if we would put a return on the ends of the fence too to go back at least to the, uh, the sight lines of the buildings next door. So we'll probably run, run the fence back maybe 10 feet. Sure. So we'll go back beyond the 30, 30 foot set, set. Very good. All right. Well, thank you. So gentlemen, before I uh, potentially close this portion of the meeting, any other questions for the petitioner? All right. So for those of you that are here, I don't know if you have any uh, comments that you'd like to offer, but you're welcome to do so now. This is the time when we open up the meeting to public comment. So you're welcome to comment if you choose to, and if you don't choose to, that's fine also. <coughs> and just again, for the record, because we're recording, if you don't mind stating your name and address for the record, thank you very much. Chris Shanoff, 333 Copper Canyon. Where are you from? I see here, you are going to go all the way across, like it looks like. Because right now, if my neighbor doesn't have anything and the trucks are parked right by the fence, it looks like you go all the way across, which is very nice. Um, we've had a long thing with Coleman over the years, so I don't, you know, whatever. Um, I hate to give an inch because then one usually takes a while. Um, so, to say okay, it kind of worries me that this is a great idea. I only have two comments that I know of so far is one night they were working on a truck and it was cold, all the windows were closed. And they worked on it for a long time and my house was filled with diesel smell. And they had the lights shining so bright it was a scene from Christmas vacation. I didn't need my lights on at all. My house was lit up like you would not believe. So if they can keep the work to the other side of the street, that would be great, because I don't want to be fumed out of my house, my dog killed, I don't want any of that. Other than that, I'm sure it's a lot quieter than Coleman's was, because uh, that was a nightmare. So that's all I got to say. All right, well, thank you very much for your comment. Um, would the gentleman have a comment? Sure. Hi, good evening, all. Uh, my name is Ray Lazar. I'm the building owner of 615 Industrial Drive. Thank you, Mr. Lazar. Uh, my general concerns Obviously, the residents in back is more important to me than uh, the seven the fumes and whatnot. But, you know, any, any emergency situations or any, anything. But we are storing flammable material vehicles on this property. Is one uh, what's the what's the storm sewer control for uh, you know contaminants going into? I mean, I. I have the EPA standards that I have to live at by my, by my building, and if there's contamination in the area, it's going to cost us all by insurance of that nature. And normally, automotive, and especially now that I see that you're going to have that top there, I mean, you know, we do have, a, I'm downhill, mm -hmm. so there's water issues as far as I'm concerned. Is that, are they going to have any sewers? on that property for drainage. Now that, now that they're going to be absorbing that much of the property by uh, asphalt. 
So what I should say to you at this moment is that um, I should have outlined this before, but this process, we try to be flexible here at the ZBA, mm -hmm. um, this process is designed for public comment mm -hmm. and we're taking down the comments and probably what I'll do is I'll ask Mr. Floria to try to respond to this comment okay. uh, to try to assuage the concern, but this process is not designed for you to ask questions and us to respond back to your question. Oh, okay. I will try to address it okay. um, in our amongst the CPA members, but that, I understand what you're trying to accomplish, but that's not really the process. Well, so I'm thank you for understanding. Anything, just no, I think it's a legitimate question, and we'll I'm try to respond questions. to that in just a moment. Exactly. Yeah, it's a legitimate question. I'm required to do it in my, on, on my side. If I kept, if I kept uh, vehicles in my building, and they were of the oil and gas nature, if there was drains, I would have to be required to, I believe, the triple track system. And the water table in the area, you know, since we're taking up this absorption of asphalt, I'm just asking if there's going to be no sewers on the ground. Fair comment. Thank you very much. Uh, my other concern is the front setback. Uh, I mean, everyone's 30 feet on that street. Uh, I'm actually probably 50 feet on my corner, which is uh, screened by trees in front as well. Uh, I, I I just don't see why. I know I know they want to get more storage, but I don't see why 25 feet is being accepted of taking more towards the street and not having. I know in the back you put the screen for the residents, which is great, but you know, putting it towards the street is is more of a visibility for us other building owners and I would prefer it to be back in line with all the rest of the buildings in the area and if, if, if not at least put some type of a screening in front of the building so you're not just looking at a fence. Thank you very much. A fence with two tight entrances coming in and out of there that's pretty tight as far as I I'm not supposed to be saying these things. No, you can say whatever you like. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm just trying to express that I'm not going to be responding directly to your questions to oh, you. Okay. Um, there's a process. Doesn't want to be out of line. No, no, no. You're welcome just, to say yeah, whatever you like. Yeah. Basically, it's we'll take the information in, and the board may ask the petitioner these questions correctly. You know, if the additional discussion may occur, that they may move forward with that kind of questions. Okay. Yeah. That's part of the process. The EPA status is very important as well as far as, mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to cost us all insurance if this ever comes up with that properties is contaminated. I'm going to protect myself from that. So that's all I have. Thank you very much for your comments. So, Mr. Florio, um, typically in these environments like this, what we try not to do is um, create a give and take between yourselves and the comments, but I think um, if there was a, an attorney present, we used to uh, ask the attorney to come back up and uh, offer some other rebuttal. Mm -hmm. So if, I know you were taking notes, so if you would care to potentially comment on some of the questions that were proposed, uh, or uh, as concerns, um, now would be a good time to do that. Okay, well I'll certainly pass along the uh, first gentleman's uh, comments about uh, the track running and Lights running, and I know they don't plan on doing any maintenance in that in that uh, lot. But uh, when they park a truck, sometimes it doesn't start right away, so they may have been trying to get it running so they can pull it away. I'm not sure, but I, I can pass that along to, to the homeowner. Thank you very much. Uh, as far as the uh, parking lot, uh, I know there's storm drains there, but uh, I don't know if there's any requirements uh, for a parking lot to have uh, a tractor. I mean, we did put one in the 7-Eleven inside you still. Um, and as far as the screening, I think uh, we talked about putting some additional screening on the front, in front of the fence in the front, so I'm sure there would be more than one to do that to help soften that a little bit. Certainly the fence is going to be a lot shorter than if there was a building, 20 foot, 25 foot building or something along the fence line. So I think we're actually probably less of a 
high score, but right? <laughs> the visibility issue with the fence is just at six feet, so we'll mirror the fences across the street at his uh, 640 with the same black, uh, black fence, so pretty much it's the years of being the uh, Thank you. Um, thank you very much. So, gentlemen, um, before I close the public portion, I just want to make sure that everybody that's assembled here has had a chance to speak. So, does anyone else want to comment on petition? Okay, then I'll close the public portion of the meeting. And, gentlemen, before I call the motion, um, I, I, I know we have some subject matter experts here. One kind of um, but maybe I'll start with Mr. Simmons because obviously that used to be a restaurant there. Certainly weren't Peterbilt trucks in there, but there certainly would be trucks from time to time. So um, maybe any insight you could provide, Mr. Simmons, around that issue would be useful. Sure. So any uh, development that occurs within the Lizard and New uh, parking lot or uh, paved area that is constructed uh, needs to comply with the kind of county storm water ordinance that was being adopted. <coughs> So a setback uh, for a parking lot that's more accessory use to the primary use of the property, uh, setbacks for parking uh, improvements would have different requirements uh, from that perspective. So they wouldn't have to comply with a 30 foot setback in front of for instance. Uh, they just have to maintain a setback of 10 feet to the property line for the parking. Uh, but in this case, because it was a storage yard area, we're treating it as the primary. So that's what the focus of that is to maintain that, um, the, what portion of the site would be the last one. Other questions, gentlemen? Did you mention coverage in here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the, the table that's on the slide shows the maximum coverage that's permitted. Oh, that's okay. They're uh, about 9% under the maximum. Okay. Sure. Uh, 
Yeah, I think from the, the setback, uh, again, it's looking at what the existing uh, improvements are established at 25 foot for the parking lot was originally constructed to. Uh, the petitioner is trying to, as the petitioner mentioned, uh, trying to maintain as much of the property as they can for storage uses. Uh, and they wanted to maintain that it just a setback. <coughs> at that point, we're going to send it forward um, with extension on the eastern side. Uh, again, because it's not the building, uh, it's a fence that's proposed uh, that would be approaching that area. Uh, it wouldn't be as uh, much of an interest in this uh, height of that projection into that front yard as Other questions, gentlemen? There's no additional front coverage, right? Just the fence is what we're talking about, that front. In the back end, there's the type C or we're doing the, there's nothing additional in the front. Uh, there would be additional landscaping oh, part, right. yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, there's not a specific code from the type C transition yard, uh, but there would be, uh, there's existing landscaping that will be retained, which you can kind of see on the slide. Yep. I mean, the uh, dimension that's there, uh, those trees will be preserved. So, Judge, so I'm going to call the motion unless there's any other questions. Okay. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to recommend to the Village Board of Trustees approval of a variance to reduce the required setback of the front yard from 30 feet to 25 feet. The variance to reduce the required interior yard setback along the east property line from 15 feet to 2 feet and a variance to the required rear yard setback from 40 feet to 20 feet subject to the conditions listed in the staff report. So moved. With regard to the conditions, uh, item C, I believe uh, you went the maximum six foot tall privacy fence, uh, no. Uh, the maximum that is permitted in the industrial district is a seven foot fence. So I would recommend a six foot minimum. Or we see seven foot maximum instead. Yep. I just, say six foot minimum, well, of course you say the yeah. ordinance itself says seven feet. I, okay. Uh, I got, I, I'm not thinking industrial, I'm thinking mm -hmm. other. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, item D, in your report, uh, you talk about number of shrubs and bushes and that. Mm -hmm. uh, do we need to repeat that here? You know, six trees and 20 bushes. Uh, no, I don't believe so. so the, condition, the transition area specifically calls out the code of how many landscaping materials are required for every 100 feet. Okay, so that would be sufficient. I just didn't know if you might get specific like you did in the report. Yeah, but the report was just to provide the information. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. 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 Right here. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. So before I move forward on that uh, call um, for vote, um, does anyone have any other comments that they want to offer before we call for vote? Okay. Mr. Simmons, would you call the vote? Uh, Williams? Yes. Freshman? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Jasper? Yes. Nance? Yes. Laughlin? Yes. Corey? Yes. So, Mr. Florio, you have a favorable recommendation. The way this works is that you needed four positive votes on the variances, and you received more than that. Um, as I mentioned earlier in our discussion, that the final arbiter of tonight's discussion will be at the next village board meeting. So my recommendation would be to stay in close coordination with Mr. Simmons, and he can tell you when that's going to be. Um, and if the public that's here would like to offer more comments, you're allowed to do that. Then. But generally speaking, uh, to help you understand this, folks, uh, this will be get more than likely placed on the consent agenda. And generally speaking, it tends to get approved. But it's a little bit of a different case for us. 
Um, so you need to be aware of that reality also. So um, if you feel as though you have strong points of view on this, my suggestion would be is to continue to stay in touch with Mr. Simmons so that he can articulate those points of view in advance of the upcoming village board meeting. Uh, just to other end that, the meeting for this case would go to the May 3rd post board meeting. Uh, so Tuesday, May 3rd at 6 p.m. at the same room will be on that meeting table. So thank you very much, everyone. And uh, before we adjourn, um, I just want to ask uh, the members if they have any questions for Mr. Simmons. I know not everyone was here when we mentioned this, but uh, I'll let Mr. Simmons comment. As, as far as I know, I don't have any questions on that. Uh, I don't have an active position uh, presently for the May hearing. Uh, it should be the next week when we have a deadline for that. So at this point, we may not be um, And then, uh, just for information from the board, I remember if we discussed it last month as well, but uh, there was some information or request for the neighborhood property. Uh, so the board's aware that the developer that did have that property under contract is backed out of the contract. Uh, so that project is so, uh, so it won't be initial additions in the near future. But that's just uh, Mr. Simmons, um, while I'm thinking about this, because I won't forget, um, there was a requirement for this board to do some. Um, uh, yeah, I know it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that requirement, uh, as any uh, uh, board member, elected uh, official, or appointed board member, um, there's a requirement. Receive that uh, information uh, via email. If you have any questions on it, we have to discuss it with you after the meeting as well. But just make sure that the deadline is in the future. You can notify them if they did it? Uh, I don't directly, but uh, Sue does. So if you can clarify where it's at, I'll check with her. If I know in advance that we're going to be behind it, it's just something. Because I was out. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. issues, and they, they rolled it out. Yeah, you're fine. So, yeah. If, if, you don't, if you've already done it, it's fine. Um, but generally, you know, you've already verified work with the conditions have been met. All right, gentlemen, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, I got it. Yeah, so, what do you think? I got it. That's me. Let's flag that.